Alabama's turkey season usually opens around the 15th of March, and that is where we join Charlie. He is on the Pushmataha Plantation in Lisbon, Alabama for an early season turkey hunt. Got to move, I ain't heard a bird this morning. His food plot hunting, like his deer plot, sometimes they'll be in one, won't be in another one. It's got a lot of clover in it. I don't know, one of them deer. Finding a new spot to set up won't be hard. There are more than 17,000 acres at Pushmataha, so feel free to roam. We hunt property, not contiguously, but we hunt property from the Mississippi line to the Tom Bigby River. And we have uh, swamp property, like I, some of it I, uh, you'll see uh, the elevation would be 30 feet, 30 feet above uh, sea level, and some of it would be, say, 250 feet. Where this camp is here, I think it's a little over 200 feet. So you get a big variety. If you look here, they got a control burn. That's really good. Turkeys like eating those young green shoots that come out of these burnings. This area ought to really be, have a lot of turkeys in it. You don't have to walk any of the logging roads very long before you find another planted field. It's easy to see that this property is managed for a variety of game. Owner Mark Izell offers hunts for turkey, deer, and hogs, and he believes management is the key to having quality hunts. We have our own wheat field, and we, we raise our own wheat, and then we have corn that we they have, and we've got a bunch of storage bins so we, and soybeans, so we started planting, and we, we use some uh, supplemental food, too. So it's just as soon as the season's over, we, we uh, start feeding. Of course, in Alabama, you, you, you can't leave it out the whole season, but we leave it out as long as we can, legally can. And when the deer season does roll around, there are plenty of food plots to hunt over. We've got over 200, over 200, over 200. and we got that about that many morning stands, we call them, you know, that out in the, out in the woods. Mm -hmm. uh, there's at least that many, so we can, we've got some fields that we didn't even hunt last year. You've been managing this place for how long? We bought this place from my brother in 1998, so I, we've had 11 seasons, or about to come up on 11. They go to, they, they run together, you know, but we've had it for 11 years. I had a good many hunting places before that, and then I bought this place for, for my brother in 98. I noticed from looking at your cam tracker pictures in there, you've got some really nice deer that you didn't harvest last year that are still out there running around. Right. Well, what you saw in there, we had some game cameras out. And uh, what we, you know, they showed a lot of deer, and we know that those deer are still around because some of them we've even taken since the last season was over. Yeah, what you saw, I think one of them in there showed a deer about, he's actually going down, but it looked like a cow it weighed so much. It looked like it weighed about 250 pounds. <laughs> when you come to Pushmataha, you will find more than an average hunting camp. The food and accommodations are first rate. In our main lodge, we have 15 bedrooms, and they're each set up with their own bath. And what we do is we do double occupancy if you come with a group. But if you're by yourself, we're not going to stick you with somebody that you've never met and ask you to share a room. So there are bedrooms set up, and some of them are set up with bunk beds in case parents come with children. We can put a family in a room. Now, we're not going to cram eight people in a room, but four people, a parent, and you know, a mother and father and two children, we've done it many times. When we come back, we'll see if Charlie can connect with an Alabama bird right here on Hunting University. This segment brought to you by 1-800-Insurance.com.